not in some glorious are oh, one day the skies will part and finally the big finger will come down and say you down there you did good now you shall be free and until then we will just be all the time agitated and all over the place no instead already now within our being it is encrypted what we are meant to do and how we are meant to do it our karma is not just something nasty it is a pointer Dear, so we have a nice integration. We have 333, chapter 3, verse 33. Even wise people act according to their nature, for all living beings are propelled by their natural tendencies. What will one gain by repression? So it's a very beautiful quote. When uh, Krishna means here wise people, he means jnanis or uh, perfect transcendental beings. And um, sometimes people have this belief that um, all uh, enlightened beings or all wise beings or all this, they become some kind of robot, uh, lifeless and very uh, conformative or something, um, let's say, all similar. And it's true that they uh, enter a transcendental reality which is, even that, to a degree very similar to all wise men and all uh, traditions and so forth. But this uh, process of entering wisdom, it does not suppress the vehicles. Yeah, the Maya Koshas, nor the physical, nor the astral. It just puts the substance of the existing tendencies. It puts them in constant harmony. It's like a point of reference that would put the natural tendency of each element of our structure in harmony. This is why, I mean, Ramakrishna and Jesus Christ there's a difference, yeah? Krishna and Yogananda, there's a difference. And I don't know now, uh, Mahananda Mai and Ramana Maharishi, they are all meeting and savoring, drinking from the same eternal fountain, yet the vehicle through which we see the, this fountain of eternity manifesting through them is according to their tendency. Ramakrishna like a child, Vivekananda like the supreme scholar, general and prophet, Ramana Maharishi as the silent wise man, and so forth. They each have Krishna like, Krishna like, <laughs> like the divine player of manifestation. Shiva is the total fearless sovereign of manifestation and all these divine ideals and divine beings that are indeed connected to one source they manifest that that source in a way in which their tendencies are free be it to wisdom be it to strength be it to courage and they will manifest a very particular sweet range of godly attributes which are predominantly alive in them. There is no suppression. It's not now, okay, now I'm enlightened, no more sense of humor for me. Yeah, if you take Papaji. All the time. He had humor before and he had humor after. But his humor is only divine human. Humor. After. Yeah? It's not, the, the enlightenment doesn't come to suppress our nature, but to put our nature and our existing flow in perfect, perfect harmony. That's what it's about. It's a very beautiful quote. And what I also consider very beautiful is each one of these quotes, what is it? 20 words is complete teachings. It's this and then it's polarized with that and it's, it's already a teaching. It's not like a half a sentence in a book and they went and they found that. And it doesn't say anything. No, it's, it has life and wisdom already. It's like a diamond. Every little piece is perfect. Yes. To me, it's a very tantric um, quotation or verse. 
this all beings follow their own nature, I feel is putting a very different uh, viewpoint upon the um, idea of karma, which very often, even we have in modern times, this karma is a bitch and this and that. But <clears throat> the point is that karma in itself, um, it's, it only becomes something negative if it sort of opposes the dharma, if it opposes purpose, if it um, like the the karma of okay, I in my heart there is a fire to practice, and then I feel too lazy to practice. That would be a karma that is in the way of the dharma, and it's sort of um, they are, like the the per, the individual nature is sort of split into two opposing forces nearly, or maybe they are not necessarily always opposing. But let's say the karma gives a very rigid frame to how the dharma can express itself. But actually, when they come together, at least this is how I interpret this, or how like my inspiration arises from this, is when I bring together within my being karma and dharma, when I bring together inside of me that which I am capable of and that which I am meant to do, they will always match. Why? Because God is not a jerk. The entire universe is built from complete love and from complete balance and from complete faith and from complete wisdom and from complete integration and harmony and all of these wonderful attributes. We don't have a godly attribute of nastiness, but we have many, many wonderful um, godly attributes and impulses that also crystallize all the way down to the little clockwork that we are and our our little clockwork that fits into the bigger clockwork of our families, spiritual families, um, of course also physical families, our communities, our countries, the planet, the galaxy, and so on. <clears throat> and this fitting in is actually perfect if we uh, if we don't resist, he's even putting it like, what what's the meaning of restraining this? What's the meaning of resisting karma? What's the meaning of resisting that which wishes to act inside of you? What is the meaning of that? But to purify it, to let go, to not be the doer any longer, to let God reveal his mystery in that thing, not in some glorious, oh, one day the skies will part and finally the big finger will come down and say, you down there, you did good, now you shall be free. And until then we will just be all the time agitated and all over the place. No, instead, already now within our being it is encrypted what we are meant to do and how we are meant to do it. Our karma is not just something nasty, it is a pointer. Sure, it's hard in some ways. Of course, we will need to overcome some stuff in order to show where we want to go. But it's not like we like to see it in this egoistic way of, ah, oh, and then I will beat my karma on the nose and do what God wants. No, God put already there a complete, wonderful, uh, interesting, mystical, well-proportioned you which has exactly in it all the ingredients that will tell your precise story of liberation, that will fit you exactly into that place, into the universe where you become alive. And when that happens, and you, he even calls it the nature, he doesn't call it the weird patterns that we should follow. No, our nature, that which arises naturally from our soul, from within the depth of our being, and when we follow that, then we become part of the nature around us, uh, of the perfectly proportioned and well-flowing and transforming and uplifting and ever-evolving reality that we are already a part of, just that we try to sort of hide from it. So I feel, for me, this sentence is, is underlining the, the tantric nature of these teachings of Karma Yoga, which invite the being to find God here now in what we are given. And then just to remove the ego, remove the personal gains and losses and trials and tribulations and all of that stuff, but just to enjoy as we go through that, to profoundly and, and fully celebrate even what we were given. You see, for us, 
who are not yet the Jnanis, it's good to restrain for us. It's good to restrain our lower tendencies. It is important. Yeah, <laughs> If we see a negative impulse, we restrain it. But once we attain wisdom, it will not be necessary because the, the underlying uh, integration and harmony which comes as the power of identification returns to its source, it will not be needed anymore. But for us, yes, we see the impulse, we see our wish to do something bad, we don't do it. Congratulations. Very good start. It's a little bit like you have, um, you know, you have something that is meant to be straight and it's like this. And then you need some sort of a bit of a push to put it into balance, but you're not pushing it around to become something different. No, if you see something that is like this, you push it into balance. And if, if it then it tends to go back, it go okay, then we have to insist a little and hold a little, hold it. Okay, now it's doing its balance thing, fine. It's something like that. Hey guys, if you like this video, make sure to like and subscribe to our YouTube channel for more content on spirituality, tantra and more. And if you want to sign up for our online classes or for our retreats, you can see our website on the description below.